Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and in a, on a colt the fowl of a donkey. Disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road and the crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus of Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today we he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined in his death and resurrection, we may enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us begin our worship with our processional hymn.
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we now enter the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his suffering, death, burial, and resurrection, let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take in our nature and suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you, one one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. The psalm will be read responsively. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my ears with sorrow, and my strength fails me because of the and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am as useless as the world of God. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as to me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, You are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me from your The second reading is from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. 
gospel story of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world. He wanted to share his last Passover meal together with his 12 closest friends, the disciples. Jesus loved his friends and wanted to show them his love in a very caring way. As the friends got ready for the meal, Jesus put water in a large bowl and knelt down on the floor. He wanted to wash the feet of each disciple. When it was Peter's turn, Peter said to Jesus, You will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, Peter, you don't understand what I am doing now but you will later. Peter loved Jesus so much that he said, Then don't wash my feet, but my head and hands also. Peter wanted to be as close to Jesus as possible. As they were eating, Jesus sadly told his disciples, Soon, one of you will betray me. One of you will tell people who don't like me where I am so they can take me away. This upset the disciples, and each one said, It's not me you're talking about, is it? It's not me you're talking about, is it? When Judas, Judas said this, Jesus gently replied, Yes, Judas, you will betray me. Then Jesus picked up a loaf of bread. He blessed it, and gave some to each of his friends, saying, Take this bread and eat it. This is my body. Then Jesus picked up a cup of wine. He gave thanks and said, Drink this. It is my blood, which I must give up, so the sins of people may be forgiven. When the meal was over, Jesus and his friends went to a place called the Mount of Olives. Jesus said sadly, Soon you will all leave me. Peter felt bad. Even if all the others leave you, I won't. Jesus looked at his dear friend and said quietly, Before the sun rises, you will pretend you don't know me three times. Peter said, Jesus, I love you too much to ever do that to you. And all of the other disciples said the same thing. Jesus, Peter, Judas, and all the other disciples spent lots of time together. They were all together when Jesus told them that his life had to end. 
It was a sad and hard time for Jesus and his friends. Jesus felt so sad that he went to a quiet place in a garden and prayed. Please, God, make me strong. Help me trust you. Jesus asked the disciples to come to the garden and stay awake while he prayed, but they fell asleep. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Jesus told the disciples three times. When Jesus finished praying, it was time for them to go and face hard things. Even though Jesus had many friends, he had some bad enemies too. Some people were scared that Jesus would change the world too much with love. Judas got scared too. He let Jesus down. Jesus told some of Jesus, Judas told some of Jesus' enemies where Jesus was. When soldiers came to the garden, Judas kissed Jesus on the cheek to show them who they were looking for. The soldiers took Jesus away. Judas and Peter ran away and hid. They were so scared. Later, Peter walked outside the place where Jesus, Je Jesus was on trial. A girl saw Peter and said, He's a friend of Jesus. He's in trouble, too. Peter wanted to help his friend Jesus, but he was scared, so he pretended he didn't know Jesus. I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. His lie made him feel even worse inside. Peter ran away. He cried and cried. Peter felt so sad for Jesus. Peter felt very, very sorry. But Jesus knew that Peter loved him. Jesus knew that Peter was his friend. That's why he had given Peter such a special job. Peter became a strong leader in the church. He told many, many people about his best friend, Jesus. I know him. I know him. I know him. And that was the truth. The priests were mad at Jesus and wanted to get rid of him. When Pontius Pilate saw Jesus, he asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus didn't answer. Pilate thought, thought kings ruled over countries and people. Jesus knew that his power was about loving God. Jesus' kingdom was not the same. Pilate was frustrated. Some people wanted to kill Jesus, but Pilate didn't think Jesus had done anything wrong. Pilate didn't want any trouble. So he handed Jesus over to the people. The priest smiled. Soon Jesus would be gone. Jesus knew that he would die, but that wouldn't be the end of the story. Jesus knew God's plan too. It was a very sad day when Jesus died. The soldiers who had arrested Jesus teased him for pretending to be a king. They took his clothes and put a king's purple cloak on him. They made a crown of vines with sharp thorns and put it on Jesus' head. Ouch! The soldiers made Jesus carry a heavy wooden cross. The cross was too heavy for him. Jesus fell and skinned his knees, and the cross tumbled to the ground. A man in the, cr in the crowd carried the cross the rest of the way. The soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the cross. They raised Jesus' cross up on a hill between two other men. The other men were thieves, and they were being crucified too. One of the men was angry with Jesus. If you are a powerful king, can't you save yourself? Why don't you just save us too? The man spat at Jesus, but the other thief believed in Jesus. He shouted back. Don't you know who this is? This is God's son. He hasn't done anything wrong. We are being punished for our mistakes, but Jesus shouldn't be here. Jesus, will you take me to heaven with you? Yes, today we will be in heaven together. After a while, the world grew very dark, 
as if a terrible thunderstorm was coming. It was as if all of creation was crying because Jesus was about to die. Jesus was feeling all alone and prayed to see if God was still there. Of course, God never left Jesus. God was with him the whole time. Jesus looked out at the crowd. He was so sad that people didn't believe that he was God's son. He asked God to forgive them for killing him. The soldiers offered him some sour wine, but he didn't want to drink it. He was ready to die. Finally, Jesus had fought for long enough. He said, God, the work you gave me to do here is finished. He breathed a final, long, slow breath, and then he died. The Gospel of the Lord. make confession of our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church, called to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Make us unflinching servants of the gospel. Deliver us from hardship as we confront the forces of injustice and practice radical compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those in positions of authority, called to lead with integrity and compassion, supply them with courage and vulnerability when challenged with new ideas. Deliver them from fear that limits imagination and impedes justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those who suffer, waiting expectantly for mercy and consolation, accompany those who feel abandoned or betrayed, defend those who are wrongly accused, and embrace those who are incarcerated or detained. Heal those who are ill, especially Sandy, Myrtle, Anna, Walter, Jeffrey, Kirsten, John, Nancy, Cindy, Eileen, Carolyn, Jean, Ryan, Jim, and Wendy. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For Christians around the world, preparing this week to journey with Jesus to the cross, reveal to us once again the earth-shaking power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. Lead us all from death to life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for all of those in Ukraine and that all of the leaders of both Ukraine and Russia can come to find peace together. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those who defend our freedom in armed forces, especially Kevin, Wesley, Milland, Keenan, Jonathan, Sean, and Pastor Dominic. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We remember those who have died and who were commended into your hands. Remember us when you come into your remember us when you come into your kingdom and prepare a place for each of us with you in paradise. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace, peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
Let us pray. Merciful God, receive the sacrifice of our praise and thanksgiving and the offering of our lives, that following us in the way of the cross, we may know the joy of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, We remember our Lord's Passover from death to life, and we proclaim the mysteries of faith. O 
God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all creation, creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God. Blessed and Holy Trinity, now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled. It's the body of Christ given for you. It's the blood of Christ shed for you. given and shed for you. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body, this is the, bo the body of Christ given and shed for you. Body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. This is the body and blood of Christ given for you. Body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. This is the body and blood of Christ. There's no more wafers. There's wafers in here. Yeah, what's if you just take that? We ran out. This is the body 
but of Christ given and shed for you. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you. This I know. The body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you. I ran out of the Please stand if you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. How are we all doing? Okay, okay. Well, as, as you may or may not know, first of all, following the service, you can go downstairs into the fellowship hall for coffee hour. What an amazing experience. So appropriate on this particular day, because you might also know this was the first day a year ago that we worshiped in the sanctuary. <laughs> all these big events, all these big, big events are happening. It's unbelievable. Okay, and also, um, this week is going to be full because we have executive board on Tuesday, 2 o'clock, worship and arts at 4. And also, we have our, uh, today is the last day to submit the Easter memorials, according to Gail, the champion of this process. So we got that out there, too. And just some uh, g general comments, of course. You might know that John Peterson had, you know, had surgery this week, and he is home and doing, I think, much better than they anticipated, which is a good news. We don't really know too much about uh, Nancy. Um, she is in Hartford Hospital. Still, Will, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, do you have any new report for her? You probably know that she's been through a long period at this point, in and out of hospitals, and really unable to get out, so certainly pray for Nancy. Eileen's back today. She was in the hospital briefly, and then she came back, and she's here. <laughs> All that. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's it. 
Let me check. Of course, Good Friday is this uh, Friday at 12 noon. You probably know that part. And you know Easter comes following that. Did you know that part? You know. <laughs> the rest of the story, as they say. Okay. Okay. Please stand for our benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his counts upon you, give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Marked with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.